when you see my fish room in videos, you know, you see the, the room completely cleaned up and uh, everything put together and uh, the tanks are impeccable. What you don't see is the, uh, the sort of ugly side of that equation. That's all the work that goes into it. It's Friday and I uh, put off a couple of the uh, uh, maintenance steps that I normally you know, carry out on Tuesday. You remember that video, Touch Up Tuesday? So I'm doing everything today, Friday. So I've got a very busy day here. And I'm going to show you what's going on in here so you can see the amount of work necessary. So that on Saturday, when I show you the tanks during the live stream, it all looks uh, uh, effortless and perfect. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. I'm not doing any work today on the small tanks, like this little Pleco tank. All the work is going to be uh, with the larger tanks, like the 300. Um, I uh, did a little, a little glass cleaning on the uh, on the beta tank, as you can see here. So I just cleaned up the, the front panel and and also stirred up the substrate a little bit and 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 uh, moved those uh, filters in the back there, move them up a notch so they can absorb a little bit more. So you're going to see my tanks real foggy today because I've stirred stuff up. There's the uh, Nemo, and there's uh, Mr. Mustard too. But all of this that you see floating around, all that's going to be gone in just a few minutes. As soon as it settles down and gets absorbed by those little Shise filters in the back corner. I was running them on the first setting, the lightest setting, but I've moved them up to the second setting and see if they actually can uh, capture more more waste. This fish is ready, this, this uh, lyre tail. Molly is ready to go back into the, you can see it looks great, good color, little sparkles on the body, and uh, his tail looks perfect. He's ready to go back into the 20 tall, but I'm a little reluctant because he is a, a, a bigger fish, and I've got some little babies in here, and I'm afraid that if I put him in right now, you can see a little baby right there. If I put him in, uh, he might go after the babies. There's some super teeny ones. They're like the size of like a period on a sentence. If I can see them, they're usually hanging around this log here. But I'm afraid if he goes in there, he's going to go ahead and just eat them, even though he's pretty well fed. So, so he'll probably stay. He'll probably stay in there for a little while. And uh, nothing new on this tank. Even though I'm going to be moving things around when I get a shipment in from uh, from the cichlid shack. I pulled some plants out of the. Uh, let's go through here. Pulled some plants out of the tanks. See him here. They're going to get a, a treatment. Oh, a couple tablespoons of bleach in a bucket. Uh, for 24 hours just to get cleaned up get some of the algae some of this brown algae off of them i could scrub them by hand this could take you forever here's some uh these are socks from the sump that got swapped out and they all go into a they all go into a bucket and and then oh once every week or two they get washed in the washing machine with half a cup of uh half a cup of bleach and then they get a couple of water rinses so that uh, there's no bleach residue. Here's a 55 gallon community tank. It got its panels cleaned up. A nice water change. Both filters are running during the process. Keeping white substrate, especially light sand clean, is really a task, really a chore. So if you're gonna get a tank and set it up with this white powdery sugar-like uh, I think it's a. Uh, I think it's it's naturals, it's uh, carib sea naturals, uh, white sand. If you get that, uh, just know that's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of work. I'm tempted to go ahead and clean out that uh, internal filter as well, but I might just let it go for a, another week since I did so much in the tank. I moved the wood around, cleaned off the plants a little bit, moved the rocks around. So uh, that might be enough for that tank for right now. This tank here, again, got a good water change of the 55, which is divided with one of those dividers from uh, from Pets, uh, oh, what's the name? I'll put the, I'll put the link below on who makes these dividers. They're awesome. I've got them for 55 gallon and for 29. There's the Auto Fairnix Tetra Stigma, if you can see him. His left eye looks perfect. His right eye has lost the fuzziness but it's, uh, it, I think he's pretty much blind on the right side. 
see the silver dollars back there? A couple of them back there. They're probably going to get moved out. I'm not sure if I put them if I put them into the community tank. Maybe I'll put them over here into the 90. This 90 gallon has a couple a couple of those uh, hang on back Marineland Emperor 400s. I let them run during the cleaning, and I've done a glass cleaning with this with this Regugu glass cleaner. I needed the real big uh, magnet because this glass is so thick. It's like half an inch. Really, really thick. So, regular, uh, you know, regular type magnet glass cleaners just don't work. They don't hold on. They, they break off. I've got to flip the lid on it at least once a week. You can see it starts to bow and then it sticks up on the corners. So, I've got to flip it. And that's a center support piece down there that I had cut. Move this light away from the water. Got to keep these lights nice and nice and dry if you can. These are all. Uh, someone asked about this. The the aquas, the Higers, uh, beams work. Those like they're all they're all watertight. You know they can fall in, and uh, as long as you pull them out quickly and dry them off, you're okay. Uh, they're not waterproof, but they're certainly water resistant. So <clears throat> big water change here. I want to say big. Maybe what do you think? Twenty percent? Thirty percent? And also a big water change. Here water change going on here. I'm still draining this tank. Usually I'll drain it using the FX6. You see the FX6 is running. You see it output back there? So I let it run. But usually what I would do is I would take that FX6 and I would just run it, run a hose, this hose here, I would just take it and attach it and, and run it out the garage, out the bottom of the garage. But I didn't want to open the garage because it's like, you know, 30 degrees outside. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, let that cold air in here. And as it is, I'm running my my floor heater. This is a great floor heater, by the way. Dr. Heater, Dr. Heater. He said at 68 and it's keeping the room really comfortable. And it's not even running right now because it's got the room at the target temperature. It uses a thousand watts. You just gotta make sure you have the right wattage available. So um, I'm gonna drop this, this tank probably another three or four inches. I uh, lightly raked the surface of the substrate, flipped over the rocks, you can see it looks pretty good. Fish will be nice and happy. Unfortunately, I had one fish jump, and that was the fish I was keeping over here in the eight gallon. I pulled out, I pulled out a Johnson eye because he was being harassed by this uh, Bucochromus Rhodesia yellow. When I went to bed, everything was good. He was relaxing underneath that little shelf. And then the next morning, when the beagles came down into the fish room, they immediately went over to the dried up fish lying on the floor and pointed him out to me. And uh, uh, kind of a sad loss, a beautiful fish. And he was almost ready to go back in. I was just giving him a break because he'd been harassed for so long. The size of that vieja. Just an absolute beast. Getting some beautiful pink around the gills. Great color in the body. Pushing over 10 inches for sure. Uh, this tank here, of course, is really cloudy because I did a, a uh, vacuuming. I don't vacuum this tank that often, but uh, I decided to go ahead and do it at least a couple times a year, right? I do it. And because I run this real powerful 3,500 gallon per hour um, wave maker, and it kind of suspends everything. It's on a timer and uh, it's unplugged right now because it was running during the water change. But uh, it's on a timer and and it, uh, it gets everything suspended and into the filters. However, when you have this kind of substrate, you can't help but, but catch, catch waste. And so uh, I gave it a, a very sort of traditional type of vacuuming, right? Where you push the, uh, the vacuum gently into the, uh, into the substrate, maybe a half inch or so. There's sand below it. See that sand? That's aragonite and sand from the prior uh, African cichlid tank. I just left that in there. That's the sand that the geos are gonna be shifting around if I should ever bring the geos over to this tank. I was talking to James Largo over at the cichlid shack. He suggested that I bring all the fish from the 90 gallon and add them to this tank because he thinks this tank right now is a little bit boring. And so he said, go ahead. I left the camera out here for tomorrow's live stream, but so these fish were all living together at one point. So he said, yeah, just go ahead and 
throw them in there and see how they do. And uh, it might work, it might work. And what that'll do is that'll free this tank up to become a, uh, a planted, a planted uh, discus tank. Now I'll tell you something, sand, this sand, especially when you have water movement, uh, a lot of water movement, stays way cleaner, way, way cleaner than uh, the, the, the heavier type of substrate like this, which traps detritus and allows the detritus to sink down between the pebbles. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, sand, I think, is just a, a, a superior substrate. It doesn't have to be super fine powdery sand. I think that uh, this, this size here or uh, this size that you see here is kind of an ideal size. Uh, this is an ideal size over here. That's ideal. But, th uh, but this, this here, this, this sugar powder uh, type is, I think, too fine. And every time I do a water change, you can't help but, but suck some of it up and have it go down into the sink. And of course, that's never, that's never a good thing. As you can see, I've got a lot more work to do here. I got to refill these tanks, treat them all. I got to clean off the lids. There's some algae buildup on those lids and also on this, this piece right here. It's got to get cleaned up. So there's a lot more to do here. And that's my, uh, that's my Friday, that's my Friday update. And that doesn't include doing anything with the, uh, with these guys over here. I might, I'll probably do a midweek water change on this 20, 20 gallon tall. Now, a lot of you said that this bar light that I don't like, I gave it a bad rating in my review. Some of you said it was intended to be at the bottom facing this way, but at the bottom so that the colored bubbles come up and, uh, it's uh, still a little bit too gimmicky for me, but I am going to try it that way, just in all fairness. what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this light here. This light will end up, this is a Hyger razor thin, super thin, full spectrum light. That light will, will come over here, uh, if anything, just be, just to help the plants. These uh, wisteria don't look, don't look that good in the stems. They don't look that good in the stems, but I'm getting new growth at the top. And that, that, that's cool. That's cool. So that's, that's a good sign. Meanwhile, the plants in the beta tank, uh, especially the Sprite, are dropping a tremendous amount of roots. You can see them, lots of roots coming off the Sprite, and that's also a good sign. And again, that haziness is gonna be all gone in just, in just a few minutes. So that's the update on the fish room. The, uh, the ugly side of, <laughs> I actually enjoy, enjoy doing the work, love doing the work. I find it very therapeutic and there's a great sense of uh, satisfaction and completion when you're done. So uh, I'm gonna get back at it. I probably got about another hour or so, maybe an hour and a half. And uh, and then I'll be done and I can relax until uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday where I jump into it again. So, so there you have it, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like the channel, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. We're almost at 50,000. Hit that bell, hit that uh, notification bell, the subscribe and all that good stuff. And I hope to see you on Saturday for cichlids and coffee. We'll talk about the fish room. We'll talk about fish, filtration, everything else in between. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member of the garage. Yes, this is a garage of the garage gang. And uh, to become a monthly supporter starts for as little as $3 a month. All right, my friends. Thank you. That's it for me. Bye-bye.